More notes on electrification. I've got the two main graphs pulled up here in En-ROADS. You can see on the left, the sales of electrified transport. And then on the right, the total in the total uh, in the world. And I want you to call, I want to call your attention to the baseline here over on the right. I want to compare it to what it was in the previous version. I'll pull up that comparison here. As you can see, here it was in the past 2022 old version of En-ROADS. And when we add in the new version, you can see that it has increased. The new baseline has more electrified transport before, after, before, and after. That said, it has less than I was really expecting to see. The way that the media talks about it and the pervasiveness and the novelty of so much electrified transport, particularly here in the United States and well ahead of us when we look at what's happening in Norway, many places around the world. And forecasts from other groups, such as the International Energy Agency and the uh, Bloomberg New Energy Finance shows some really high growth scenarios in their forecasts. Here's a graph of the baseline for En-ROADS along with a blue dot for IEA and the red dot for Bloomberg New Energy Finance two times. I wanna really focus on 2030, that cluster around 30% of the sales being electrified transport by 2030, 30 by 2030. Let's compare this against what we're seeing here in En-ROADS. As you saw in that graph, they forecasted 30% by 2030. Look over on the left, that is way up here at this area, but we're down here around, what, 9%. What's going on in our simulator to lead to a slower rate of growth? There are three big reasons. The first is that we, take a long time when we simulate the future of the charging infrastructure. It takes a while for the reinforcing loop to play out. The reinforcing loop starts with sales of electrified transport, driving the need for charging infrastructure. There's a delay there. When it gets built, that builds the attractiveness of investments in electrified transport, which then of course leads to more charging infrastructure around and around in this reinforcing growth loop. But it takes a while, particularly when it's competing against fuel power transport, where the pervasiveness of the not charging infrastructure, but the fueling infrastructure is so great. There are here in the United States and around the world, so many fueling stations that are accessible, gas stations all around the world, competing against that. And this process is relatively slow. Secondly, when we modeled the choice to invest in electrified transport, there are two big financial considerations, the total cost of ownership, which includes the fuel price, and then also the purchase price, say, of an electric vehicle. And we balanced 50%, 50% attention between those two financial factors. Whereas we suspect that many others may consider the total cost of ownership to dominate a good bit more. The other is that we don't strengthen policies in our forecast. We're saying, here's what the policies are today. And we're not assuming that they're getting strengthened over time. Instead, we take a very conservative interpretation of policies and then allow you to use the simulator to see what would it take to get more growth, say, in electrified transport. When we do add strengthening of policies, you can see what we get and how much closer it is to the IEA and BNEF. So what I'll do is I'll go here to electrified transport and we're going to move the main slider. The main slider affects two things, both the subsidy for electrified transport and then secondly, it's going to build sufficient charging infrastructure. There you can read about what it's doing. I'm gonna move this up to 50% of the purchase cost. There it is. There is the effect with 50% of the purchase cost. 
and you can see the result. In 2030, we're here. 2032, we hit that 30%. It's a little bit later, but pretty comparable and close to those forecasts from others. You can recreate others if you choose. And actually, you can change even more of the assumptions to get it even closer to match exactly the IEA and the Bloomberg New Energy Finance. That said, just note, just as in the old version of En-ROADS, even when we do have large electrified transport, temperature is only going from 3.3 to 3.2. That is because the main insight about electrified transport remains, which is that we also need to decarbonize the grid for electrified transport to help avoid future warming. So we need to have more renewables and less coal and less gas. And these are the kinds of things, or ideally a carbon price, these are the things that would get temperature down a lot and really take advantage of all this electrification. All right, those were more notes about electrification. I hope they were helpful. Go get them.